This collaboration with Quinn Dunkey from the Blondie Hacks channel has been a special treat for me. Quinn has made quite a name for herself on YouTube with well over 200 videos posted so far. Her machining is done to a very high standard and I love her unique sense of humor. In part one of the video, I made the middle and top of the tank and started the base plate. We'll pick it up today by machining the base for the angled legs. The first thing I've done is to put a 1-2-3 block on my vise and I've positioned this to be exactly at 25 degrees. I've also put a pin in the 1-2-3 block right in the center so it's a perfect fit on the center hole of the disc. And I've positioned the table of the mill so the center of the spindle is centered on that pin. So now I'm going to move over to the far edge of this disc. I want to position my center right on the edge of the disc and then I'll rotate that disc until it's in perfect alignment with that line. And I'll clamp the disc into place. So this hole is going to be offset 190 thousandths from the edge. So I'm going to zero the dial on my milling machine and move the table toward me 190 thousandths. And that's the center of the first hole. So I'll take this pointer out of my chuck, put in a center drill, and I'll center drill the first hole. Then I'll drill through with a tap drill size for a 1032 tap. And I need to spot face this hole so the quarter inch leg will fit flush. I'm going to do something now that Quinn would never do since she's a close tolerance machinist and I'm not. I'm going to put an end mill in a chuck. A fine machinist would never do that because this will run out a few thousandths of an inch. But I'm going to say it's good enough for this job. And we'll go just deep enough so it bottoms out on the downhill side of the slope. That should be sufficient. And now I can run the tap through the hole. This is a thread forming tap, so it rolls the metal into position rather than cutting it. And on a soft metal like this, I can power the tap through the material. I'm going to put the mill in low gear, and we'll run the tap through. Now we'll get set up for the next hole. I'll put the pointer back in the chuck, loosen the clamps, and rotate the part so that it's lined up on the next line. Clamp it into place. And I'm going to change my sequence this time. I realized I should do the spot facing first because the center drill could wander a little bit if it's engaging a sloped surface. So I'll speed up the mill again and spot face that area. Okay, that part's done. So there's our disc with the angled holes drilled and tapped. So we'll drill and tap the hole for the outlet fitting, the base of the tank now. So I'll hold the part in the chuck. I need to drill this for the tap drill size. It's a 3 8 24 thread. And we'll drill that through. Then I'll put the tap in the chuck. 3 8 24 tap. 
And I'll engage the back gears on the lathe. Use a little cutting fluid. And I can power this tap through the soft bronze. Flip this around and deburr the back side. I'm going to weld the base plate to the sheet metal tank bottom and I'm being really fussy about the fit up of these parts. I'm using an 8th inch spacer under the base plate and you'll see why in a minute. Let's loosely assemble these parts. I'll use a clamp to pull the base plate tight against the 8th inch spacer in my tabletop so I know the base plate is parallel with the table. Now I'll push the sheet metal down until it's flush with the table and that gives me the fit I want at the edge with the sheet metal spaced down one material thickness from the top edge of the base plate. I want that space so after I fill the joint by welding, I'll still have good penetration when I sand the weld smooth. If I had fit this flush at the top edge, I'd lose my penetration when I sanded the weld down and the tank could leak, so this is a crucial step. So I'm happy with this fit up and I'll start putting tack welds on these parts. So everything looks great, and I can finish well this joint now. So the weld is finished. I'll let this cool down, then I'll smooth off the weld. It just dawned on me that I can use the lathe to turn off the bulk of this weld. So I made an arbor, and there's a 3 8 24 stud sticking out of the middle. So I'll thread this onto the stud and I have a shape form tool here which I can use to pare this well down. So that's about as far as I'll go with the lathe. I'm going to sand this weld to smooth it. And I'll use a few different tools for that. So this is a 3 inch diameter 80 grit disc. And I'll use that for the flat face of this. Then I'll use a larger disc with 120 grit. And it's a little more tricky to get into these concave areas. So I'll hold this in a vise at an angle. And this is 80 grit on a smaller disc, but I've rounded the edges of this over just by pinching it with my fingers to make it a little bit easier to get into this recessed area. So the weld is smoothed out pretty well, and there's one more step I can take to make it even better. I'm going to take the 80 grit disc off of this. I have some sticky back paper here that I've cut down to be a little bit larger than the 3 inch backing pad. I'll just stick that on with the adhesive, and again I'm going to fold these edges over a little bit to round the edge of the disc. And that will let me put a finer finish on this inside curve. So 
So that's done a great job of cleaning up this weld. It's time to weld the base into place now. So I put a bolt in the center hole to give me a handle to hang on to. I want to get this centered as best I can. The fit up really has to be good on this. Okay, that looks excellent. So I'm going to start putting tack welds around the edge of this. So I'm ready to finish weld this now. So the welding is finished. I'll let this cool down and I'll sand the weld smooth. I'll start cutting the weld down with 80 grit sandpaper. So I remove the bulk of the weld and I'll start smoothing this joint with 120 grit paper. I'll flip this around to start smoothing the top weld. So this has come along great so far. I'm going to see if I can chuck this up with the lathe and spin it so I can give it an even grained finish. I made a simple arbor to hold this tank in the lathe. I turned a plug out of MDF that's a nice snug fit in the top end of the tank. Then I took a piece of 3 quarter inch round stock and I drilled and tapped a 3 8 24 hole in this end and then put a stud in that. So this can go down and engage the thread in the bottom. And I'll tighten this until it bottoms out. So this portion can be held in the chuck. And there's a center hole in the end of this shaft. So my live center can fit in that. So it'll have good support on both ends. So the tank is on the arbor, chucked up in the lathe. And I have it set on a fairly low speed. And I'm going to go over this with the disc sander one more time. Note that I completely covered the ways of my lathe to protect it from the abrasive. And this is smoothing up pretty well. I'm going to speed the lathe up now and block sand this. I think it looks great. I'm going to put a 1032 threaded hole in one end of each leg. So I'll put the leg in the chuck. I'll use the center drill first. Then I'll put in the drill for the tap. I'll go about a quarter inch deep. I'll countersink that hole a little bit. And now I'll run the tap. I put some masking tape on this tap so I know how deep it needs to go. And we'll tap the hole. So the hole is tapped. We'll do this on the other two legs. I want to finish the bottom of each leg. I'll use a corner rounding router bit as a form tool to put a slight radius on each one. Then I'll use a file to chamfer the corner. 
and give it a light sanding. And I'll do that to each of the legs. And now I'll put a green finish on all of the parts. So now I have a nice green finish on all the legs. It's time to start forming the cap for the tank. I'm going to try doing this in a way I've never done before. I have a tank end here. You can buy these online. And I'm going to try forming a copper blank against it. This is actually the cutout I had from making the hole in the tank bottom. So to press the disc against this domed end, I'm going to use the female part of the two and a half inch punch and flare die. And to hold the blank centered, I'll just use tape. Then I'll put this in position and use the press to force them together. Let's see how that worked. Well, I'd say it worked pretty well. So that's a very rapid way to form a domed part. I'm going to form the inner part of the cap on the lathe. And this is a technique I've seen Quinn do. So I've made a form here that I'll be pushing the copper against. And I have a clamping block that's part of this. So let's get this assembled. I'll get this nice and snug. And while this disc is spinning, I'll be pushing against it with the edge of a ball bearing. And we'll take this in many stages. So there's the first stage. So I'll rotate the bearing a few more degrees, lock the tool post in place, and then get the bearing positioned. Looks pretty good. So I'll keep angling this bearing more and more. Almost done. Just one more push. I'm going to line up the bearing with the side of the chuck to make sure it's perpendicular to the work. And we'll do one last push. So let's take a look at that. When Quinn did this, she was using thicker copper and she annealed it many times. Because this is thin copper, I just had a hunch I could do it without annealing and it worked out just fine. I'm going to make the knob for the lid. I'm using brass bar and I started by facing off the end and turning two diameters, 5 8 inch and 1 half inch. Now I'm going to do a little profile cutting on this. That'll be totally freehand. So this is a form tool I've hand ground. That looks pretty good. I'll drill and tap a 1032 hole in the end of this. I'll pull the tool post off so you can see a little better. I'll put in the tap drill. I'm going to go 3 8 deep with this, so I'll use the graduations on the tailstock to give me the depth I want. I'll countersink that. And I'll tap it. And now I can part this off. Little trick I learned from Quinn is using the chuck to get the parting tool at the right angle. And I want to part this off at a half inch.
So there's our part so far. I made a mandrel with a 1032 tapped hole to secure the knob for finishing the top. I will continue freehand turning that. And I'll file it from this point. I'm going to put my lathe on the highest speed and give it the final finish. And there is the knob. So let's do the final assembly. I'll start by putting the set screws in the bottom holes. I talked to Quinn about these set screws. She's got some special sauce that will seal them. It's a Loctite product that's designed to seal threads. So that will keep any water from leaking through the threads. I'm going to make everything finger tight for now because I'll ship it disassembled. So the set screws are in place. We can start putting the legs on. And I'll assemble the cap. So there's the finished water tank, and I'm very pleased with the way it came out. So I'll ship this to Quinn tomorrow. She's been great to work with, and I love what she does on her channel. I can't wait to see how this works with her steam plant. I love making these videos, and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment, and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos. I'll see you next time.